We know that cancer cells require a lot of energy for their growth, survival and proliferation. In order to provide energy, they require a unique, extremely fast metabolism. And one of the most specific features of their metabolism is the increased glucose uptake with subsequent fermentation of glucose to lactate. And the most unique feature is that this conversion to lactate was observed even in the presence of oxygen with completely functioning mitochondria. This phenomenon is known as the Warmbur effect. In the 1920s, Otto Warmbur and colleagues made the observation that tumors were taking up enormous amount of glucose compared with what was seen in the surrounding tissue. In addition to this, glucose was fermented to lactate even in the presence of oxygen, which is a unique because normal cells do not do this. And they define three of the most specific properties in the metabolism of cancer cells. It's high glucose uptake and lactate secretion even with sufficient amount of oxygen. And such specific metabolism was called Warmbur effect. Now to explain how these three metabolic properties develops, we have to recall the major principles of glycolysis. When glucose enters into the cell, glucose undergoes glycolysis. Recall that in glycolysis, glucose step by step is degraded to pyruvate. Initially, glucose is phosphorylated to glucose 6-phosphate, then glucose 6-phosphate is converted into fructose 6-phosphate, then phosphorylation occurs that results in production of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, and then fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is cleaved into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and dehydroxyacetone phosphate. Then dehydroxyacetone phosphate is converted to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, and the crucial moment here is that glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is oxidized by glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase that use NADS cofactor to 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. And this reaction results in formation of NADH. And if cell at this particular moment has enough amount of oxygen, then NADH is going to mitochondria where it delivers two electrons to electron transport chain, because electron transport chain is working only in aerobic condition. And the electrons in electron transport chain undergo oxidative phosphorylation that results in energy production. When NADH gives two electrons, it gets converted back to NAD, and now glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase can use again this electron carrier in the oxidative reaction. So it's very important to maintain this recycling of NADH to NAD to keep glycolysis going. And during glycolysis, 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate through two consecutive reactions is converted to phosphoenol pyruvate. And then phosphoenol pyruvate is converted to pyruvate, which is the final product of glycolysis. And with sufficient amount of oxygen, usually pyruvate is converted into acetyl CoA that goes into the Krebs cycle. In the Krebs cycle, NAD and FAD molecules pluck out electrons out of acetyl CoA with formation of NADH and FADH molecules. And then these electron carriers deliver electrons to electron transport chain that results in energy production. But if ischemia occurs and cells do not have sufficient amount of oxygen, in anaerobic condition, electron transport chain is not working. So mitochondria cannot produce any energy and also without electron transport chain, NADH cannot get rid of electrons. But NADH anyway must be converted back to NAD, because glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase cannot provide oxidation without NAD. And without this reaction, it's impossible to maintain glycolysis. So because electron transport chain is not working, NADH molecules progressively accumulate in the cytosol, and they have to find something to which they can donate these electrons. And the solution here is lactate dehydrogenase. NADH with help of lactate dehydrogenase donate electrons to pyruvate. As a result, NADH is converted back to NAD and pyruvate is converted into lactate. And now glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase at least can convert glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate into 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. So, in normal condition, this electron's donation to pyruvate with formation of lactate, it's an adaptive response that basically maintains activity of glycolysis and permits to generate ATP molecules in anaerobic condition. 
because it's the only way how normal cell can generate energy without oxygen. Also important that because mitochondria without oxygen cannot work, pyruvate stays in the cytosol. The reason why mitochondria is totally dysfunctional is that as we look at Krebs cycle, the function of the Krebs cycle is to produce NADH and FADH molecules that have to deliver electrons to electron transfer chain. But in anaerobic condition, electron transfer chain is not working. So there is no point to generate NADH and FADH. That's why Krebs cycle also becomes dysfunctional. So in anaerobic condition, the entire energy generation process occurs strictly in the cytosol. And if we compare the energy production, the glycolysis itself generates two ATP molecules. And in anaerobic condition, because mitochondria becomes dysfunctional, two ATP molecules its all what we can produce. But if we have sufficient amount of oxygen, then pyruvate molecules are going into the mitochondria. And degradation of pyruvate results in production of 34 ATP molecules. And two ATP molecules from glycolysis itself, plus 34 ATP molecules that are produced in the electron transfer chain, gives 36 ATP molecules. So in the cytosol, from one glucose molecule, we can produce just two ATP molecules. In the cytosol plus mitochondria, it's 36 ATP molecules. And the unique feature of cancer cells is that even with sufficient amount of oxygen, cancer cells prefer not to degrade pyruvate in mitochondria, but rather to convert pyruvate into lactate. As a result, cancer cells produce only two ATP molecules and a great amount of lactate. Accumulation of lactate inside the cell causes intracellular acidosis. Now to understand why lactate cause decrease in pH, we have to know that actually the product of lactate dehydrogenase reaction is lactic acid. But in aqueous environment, as in cytosol, hydrogen ions easily dissociate from lactic acid and this results in formation of lactate. So when we are talking about accumulation of lactate, simultaneously also accumulation of hydrogen ions occurs. So with anaerobic glycolysis, the amount of lactate and also the amount of hydrogen ions in the cytosol increase, and hydrogen ions make intracellular pH more acidic, or we can say that accumulation of hydrogen ions decrease intracellular pH and cause intracellular acidosis. Then cancer cell excretes lactate and hydrogen ions out of the cell, and this results in acidification of the microenvironment. So, as we see now, we have all three metabolic properties of cancer cells. Increased glucose uptake and lactate secretion with enough amount of available oxygen. And together they constitute the Warburg effect. At first glance, it's tempting to say, what a silly choice made. Cancer cells require a lot of energy for growth, survival and proliferation. Then the logical question why to produce from one glucose molecule only two ATP molecules if you can generate additional 34 ATP molecules in mitochondria. And for now we have two most popular explanations. The first reason is that the production of lactate from glucose occurs 10 to 100 times faster than the complete oxidation of glucose in the mitochondria. To explain this, when cancer cell uptake one glucose molecule, it can degrade one glucose molecule in the cytosol and then in the mitochondria with production of 36 ATP molecules. A cancer cell can degrade glucose just in the cytosol with production of only two ATP molecules and lactate. But as we see, it's the ATP gain per one glucose molecule. But what about the rate of ATP production per time? It turns out that degradation of pyruvate in mitochondria is a time-consuming process. And this makes sense. Because just look at the amount of steps that mitochondria has to provide for complete degradation of pyruvate. A lot of reactions means a lot of time. So cell has to wait until mitochondria will degrade pyruvate and only after cell will uptake another glucose molecule. So aerobic glycolysis is a relatively slow process with slow glucose uptake. In comparison, conversion of pyruvate into lactate in the cytosol it's just one reaction, catalyzed by lactate dehydrogenase, so it occurs almost immediately. And right after this reaction, cell can uptake a new glucose molecule. 
So in this case, the speed of the process and the rate of glucose uptake are extremely fast. And in fact, it was estimated that the production of lactate from glucose occurs 10 to 100 times faster than the complete oxidation of glucose in the mitochondria. Now to understand the benefits, let's suppose that full degradation of one glucose molecule in the cytosol and then in the mitochondria takes 50 seconds and this results in release of 36 ATP molecules. The degradation of one glucose molecule in the cytosol results in production of only two ATP molecules and lactate, but it requires just one second. So in 50 seconds, by anaerobic glycolysis, cancer cell will produce 100 ATP molecules and a great amount of lactate. So actually, when we are talking about energy production per time, Degradation of glucose in the cytosol is more efficient, and this provides a great amount of energy for cancer cell for their rapid proliferation and growth. And also, anaerobic glycolysis provides acidification of the microenvironment due to the lactate secretion. And currently, we have so called acid mediated invasion theory. To explain this, when cancer cells uptake a glucose molecule, they degrade glucose in the cytosol to ATP and lactate with hydrogen ions. And then they excrete lactate into the surrounding environment. But other cells also prefer glucose to any other metabolite. So cancer cells compete with other cells for glucose molecules. And among these cells are tissue-associated macrophages. In fact, tissue-associated macrophages are the very dangerous enemies of cancer cells simply because they can kill them. And macrophages require glucose for energy production because they require a lot of energy for their effective function to kill cancer cell. But the big spot in macrophages is that they do not like hydrogen ions. And cancer cells, by secretion of lactate with hydrogen ions, induce polarization of macrophages. And in polarized state, macrophages cannot uptake glucose so efficiently. And with decrease in glucose uptake, their energy production obviously decreases. So now they cannot produce sufficient amount of energy to maintain their effective functions, thereby they cannot kill cancer cells. And this basically gives a green light for growth of cancer cells. So lactate secretion creates acidic environment for cancer cells that greatly increase their invasion capacity. So as we see, there is a certain reason why cancer cells use barbour effect.